good evening to everyone. I, Dr. Tanu Satija, uh, the GP Forum Coordinator for Delhi Yaki, welcome you all in this first webinar of a series for grandparents aging gracefully. In this, we'll discuss the common health issues that are faced by our grandparents, both physical and mental. A little bit of parent, a little bit of teacher, a little bit of best friend, and a little bit of partner in crime, and a lot of unconditional love. That's how our grandparents are. And they have a special role in the upbringing of children, whether they live near them or connect to them through video calls. So this is a small effort to help them with their common health issues, which they are facing day in and day out and improve their quality of life. We are honored to have amongst us stalwarts from various medical fields. I would like to welcome our uh, moder esteemed moderator for the day, Dr. Vijay Agrawal, sir. Dr. Our panelists, Dr. Raminder Singh Hazuria, sir, and Dr. Soumya Tandon. I would also like to welcome uh, the National GP Forum Coordinator, Dr. Anjali Saxena, and our Delhi Aki in charge, Dr. Latika Bhalla. Uh, Dr. Anjali Saxena is the National GP Forum Coordinator. She's a senior uh, pediatric consultant at Rainbow Hospitals, New Delhi. And she has been working tirelessly to conduct programs for the grandparents across India. I would uh, request Nam uh, to tell us something about the GP Forum. Thank you, Dr. Tanu. On uh, behalf of Aki, uh, the Grandparents Forum, I welcome you all. Aki, that stands for the Association for Adolescent and Child Care in India is focused on the nurturing of children and adolescents so that they can mature into healthy, happy, and resilient youth. Initially, Aki started working with children and adolescents and gradually increased their work to include youth, parents, and teachers. This year, we added another forum for grandparents. Traditionally and culturally in India, Grandparents play a very important role in the family structure and dynamics, and therefore in the development of children. And we want to raise awareness about this. Our children need a safety net while growing up. Like it is said, it takes a village to raise a child, and we want this to continue. In 1990, the United Nations General Assembly introduced the International Day for Older Persons, to be celebrated annually on the 1st of October to appreciate the contribution of the elder generation as well as raise awareness about issues concerning them as it affects everyone in the family. We have taken inspiration from this and we are very happy to start with this series for grandparents. So with this, I welcome you all. Over to you, Dr. Tanu. Uh, now I would invite Dr. Latika Bhalla, our Delhi Center in charge. She is a senior consultant in adolescent pediatrics in Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi, and has been working for the welfare of the adolescents for the past around 10 years. Uh, I would request ma'am to please share her views. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. And it has been my uh, proud privilege to be on the platform sharing uh, this platform with so many stalwarts. Uh, Aki has been, uh, uh, we have all grown with Aki and probably ma'am taught us how to start, uh, um, how to do a questionnaire, even any research work, which probably we were inducted into was by Dr. Swati Bhaberman. So it has been my real proud privilege to be associated with her for the last eight to nine years and where we nurtured Aki Delhi branch with a lot of care and probably being Delhi being the heart of the uh, activities. So many activities were being done uh, for the parents, for the teachers in Gangaram Hospital, outside Gangaram Hospital, in school forums and other platforms. Uh, so today only we had a word a mental health week starting, as everyone knows, starting from 8th to 14th of October. 
and probably the world mental health day on the 10th of october so this was today was the first talk with the students um, in saint mary school so we are trying to imbibe all the all the problems which uh, probably the children can be having we try to bring that to this platform and uh, uh, delhi being uh, nurtured by uh, very senior pediatricians from government institutes like dr sangeeta yadav dr harish premde as well as from the private institute dr anjali saxena dr tanu and uh, so many other pediatrician who have been a uh, equally part of this uh, great association so i thank everyone for being there and i basically wish uh, dr tanu as well as dr anjali saxena along with the panelist esteemed panelist a great success of this program thank you so much thank you ma'am kind words uh our executive director of aki Uh, Dr. Swati Bhave, ma'am, could not join us due to some personal emergency, but I would like to introduce her to you all, and maybe later she'll join us and share her words of wisdom. Dr. Swati Bhave, who has been an inspiration for all of us, he is an adjunct professor, adolescent medicine in D. Y. Patel Medical College and D. Y. Patel Vidya Peet Pune. She is a visiting consultant of pediatrics at Sassoon Hospital and B. J. Medical College in Pune. She is also the head of the adolescent clinic in Jehangir Hospital, Pune. She has been the only female I. P. President in year two thousand. and has worked at many executive positions in many international organizations like international pediatric association international adolescent health association and she has also been a member of the who technical steering committee on child and adolescent health in 2009 and 10 she has won many awards for her professional and community work i hope she can join us soon but now i'll share a video of ma'am Will introduce us all to Aki and its functions. Aki, and I'm giving you all a short introduction about Aki. Association of Adolescent and Child Care in India, Aki, was founded in 2007. There are a group of doctors. Association of Adolescent and Child Care in India (ACI) was founded in 2007. There are a group of doctors, pediatricians, and physicians of all specialties, including psychiatrists, gynecologists, orthopedic surgeons, etc. We have volunteers from all the various stakeholders of child and adolescent health, that is, parents, teachers, lawyers, sports people, physiotherapists, scientists, and even engineers. we have been doing for the last 14 years mainly urban based work with parents teachers and students in schools and colleges in many parts of the country and we have also done some community and rural projects our mission is holistic health in children and adolescents and young adults and promotion of healthy lifestyle and prevention of lifestyle associated diseases we work through the two pillars teachers and parents and we have added grandparents since last year We have presented many papers on adolescent lifestyle behaviors at national and international forum, and we have also won a lot of awards. Aki was launched in 2008 in Mumbai in the KC College with MP Mulin Devra and the Sheriff of Mumbai under the chairmanship of Padma Bhushan, Dr. R. D. Lele, and we had a public forum program on healthy lifestyle. Aki hierarchy contains of a board of directors chairperson dr lele vice chairperson mr bhave myself as executive director and sharmila lele as the secretary treasurer 
We also have a core group consisting of Dr. Samir Shah, who is our web coordinator and national Aki coordinator, Dr. Anuradha Suwani, who is our ethical committee chair, and Dr. Surekha Zoshi, who is research coordinator. We have different forums, and for each forum, we have a very senior pediatrician, Dr. Prashant Karya from Surat for youth forum, Dr. Sandeep Kaude from PCB Pune for the parenting forum, Dr. Shailaja Mane from Pune for the teachers forum, and Dr. Anjali Saxena from Delhi for the teachers for the grandparent. We have centers throughout India, which are city centers. We also have regional centers. And these are the photos of each regional center in charge. So this is our website, which gives the glimpses and the office numbers and contact numbers of our various centers. Aki has volunteers all over the country. We have more than 170 volunteers. You can see the list of the various cities. You can also join as a volunteer. To join as volunteer, please send an email to aki2019 at gmail.com letting us know why you want to join Aki and sending your photo and a short bio. So you can see these are the various photos of our enthusiastic, dedicated volunteers from many parts of India. Our presence on social media is on Facebook, on Twitter and Instagram. We also have two websites www.aki.in, www.akitrainingprograms.com on which you can see the recorded sessions of the various webinars, more than 100, which we have conducted in the last two years. And to contact us, this is our email, aki2019 at gmail.com. So thank you, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed today's program. Now I'd like to introduce our esteemed moderator for the day, Dr. Vijay Agrawal, sir. Sir is president at Consortium of Accredited Hospital Organizations, a chairman of Accreditation Committee for Skill Training and Service Division at National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. He is the founder president of Society for Child Development. Sir is a senior consultant pediatrician and has been associated with various hospitals like Max Saket and Pushpanjali Crossley. He has been a co-chair at the NABH Accreditation Committee from 2013 to 2017. Sir has introduced the National Pulse Polio Program and the Biomedical Waste Management Scheme in Delhi and has been launching various programs to train quality professionals. He has won various awards and honors for his service, including the Lifetime Achievement Award from IMA and the Association of Healthcare Providers in India. We welcome you, sir. Now our first panelist for the day, Dr. Ramender Singh Hazuria. He's a senior physician and is associated with Sir Gangaram Hospital and City Hospital. He is also an occupational health advisor and physician with the British High Commission and Embassy of Italy. He had been earlier associated with Jet Airways from 2001 to 2019. Welcome, sir. Our second panelist for the day, Dr. Soumya Tandon. She is an associate consultant, Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Sir Gangaram Hospital, New Delhi and she has various research publications and awards to her credit. Welcome, Dr. Soumya. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Sir Dr. Vijay Agarwal to start the panel discussion. And if there are any queries, please post them in the Q&A box and they can be taken as and when time permits. So please. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Tanu, for that excellent, uh, I would say, in, initial brief introduction and everything. And uh, you might, it might sound very paradoxical that a lot of pediatricians have come together to talk about geriatrics. I think, uh, let's say, 
one of the probably our claim to this topic is that we are now ourselves a lot of us are into the geriatric age group we are grandparents ourselves to really talk to the grandparents so welcome grandparents and the people who look after uh, the grandparents but i would like to first of all uh, congratulate each one of us who is into that age group please understand one thing that uh, out of the many revolutions that have happened in the past i think the longevity revolution is the most phenomenal revolution we are living uh, 30 to 34 years more than what our grandparents lived and uh, unlike uh, in the past when people used to think now this is the age of decline that you have reached your peak and you have declined a lot of people believe in fact you should listen to this ted talk by jane fonda who describes it as the third act of life and just like you have the period of adolescence and in midlife and all that and same way you have this third act of life which is in fact we used to run a program and i used to call it the golden years program of life so uh, we must also understand that although one third of the people may have some genetic diseases or problems two third of the people can live in through this age the way they feel like it's a extremely extremely important period of life i think one of the best periods of life to really pass through and if one wants to look at uh, somewhere i think uh, to dispel this notion that we have to live this life uh, of misery or thing like that you must understand there are there are pockets of people in the world where the number of people who are now above the age of 90 years and 100 years good number of them and they are living very very happily and in a very healthy way they have much less number of diseases and everything and i would tell you that uh, uh, these are called the blue zones uh, in the world and one of the most important blue zone is a place in japan called okinawa and uh, so that okinawa place has maximum number of centenarians people who are now more than 100 years it's phenomenal and the people have now gone and done research there as to what makes them live that long and uh, in a very happy and healthy way and i think that as people uh, who are into that kind of an age group we need to do i am not going to get into but what i will definitely introduce you to this term that in japan these people have a way of life what they call as ikigai now ikigai means the reason for being there with with happiness and uh, i think uh, i i'll request everyone to go on the net and research ikigai and one of the main meaning of ikigai is that you find a purpose in your life uh, there is no reason for you not to have a purpose even while we are into this age group however majority of the people who are into this age group do need because as i said uh, the very, this is a new i would say new age group in a way for the world to Uh, experience and to take care for us to take care of ourselves and therefore today in this session uh, we are very fortunate to have a seasoned family physician internist cardiologist and i can personally vouch for him because he has taken care of even my parents and now he takes care of us so that's dr raminder hazuria who has been a very very well known uh, physician in the town of uh, in, in the ncr and we also have a very very young bright mental health specialist dr somya tandon so there are two major parts of the body the both body and the mind we have two very very important people to kind of 
discuss and take care of some of the things. So I, I'll start with uh, uh, Dr. Raminder Hazuria to talk about, first of all, I think uh, no matter even when you are healthy or anything, there are, you realize there are some nagging problems which cannot be called as uh, a major disease. You kind of live through it. But I'm sure that when this age group people come to you with these kind of minor nagging problems, but can you talk about what are these problems uh, normally that you see and uh, any advice that you can give them to take care of them? Yeah, yeah thank you. The, uh, many older people, older in India, I think we call as 60, 65. In, in uh, America, they say 65. I think we get older a little earlier after retirement, 60 years of age. And senior people have a lot of issues, which can be health issues, medical issues, psychological, social issues. But some issues which are non-medical, I would say, I would take any disease as such, but common things which can improve the quality of life and make them more happier to live the life better. So basically what we are concerned is the quality of life, not the quantity, which is very indeterminate. So the common things uh, I would say take first are constipation, urine issues, and then we go on to some other issues like injuries and all that. Constipation, we are all obsessed with. If somebody doesn't get the stool in the first thing in the morning, he says he is sick, he runs to various naturopaths and homeopaths and other things. So uh, what we want to say is that do not stress. You can stool can be you can pass clear your bowels any time of the day. It doesn't have to be in the morning. It can be alternate day. It can be once in three days as long as you feel comfortable. But don't stress that it has to be her first thing in the morning. And we say never hold your stools. If you have to go to the toilet, out time go go and clear it up. Don't keep on keep pending it. Spend time there, not to sit hours with a, with a mobile phone, anything, but spend time and just don't uh, force yourself too much. And uh, another thing you can have is, you know, our old, uh, earlier on, when, they, when we didn't have this English toilets, we all used to use Indian toilets in which you, you're pressing your thighs against your abdomen. So same thing we can do now, keep, keep a small stool in front of you in the toilet and flex your thighs towards uh, they automatically flex your uh, your thighs towards your abdomen, which keeps little pressure on your large intestine and helps you to evacuate. And uh, then in the diet, we need to change it or modify it depending on our uh, body movements and regarding our likes and dislikes. Regular physical activity is very important. Maybe yoga, meditation, any aerobic exercise. So I mean, it depends on your health status can be very useful. Certain medications also can cause constipation and bowel movements disrupted. So that can be our, some food supplements also. So that can be discussed with your treating physician and, and, and done. In the diet, a high fiber diet will be very good uh, because the metabolism in our group, age group, senior age group is low. Muscle movement, the intestinal movement is low. So we need a high uh, fiber diet. It can be in the form of nuts, in the form of uh, fruits and a lot of fruits and vegetables and uh, roti, atta with bran. Bran which you normally throw away. Bran is a very rich source of high fiber diet. And nuts, I said, then legumes, dal, black chana, chickpeas and lobia, etc. Et now there's a passion of chia seeds and sunflower seeds, which are very good, which contain the highest amount of uh, high fibers. Multigrain bread instead of a normal bread, multigrain bread is still better than that. We save a goal, psyllium, which is an age old remedy. See, the problem, the problem is that people take a small quantity without much water and they say nothing happens and it rather it comes out as it is. So, the uh, secret is that you got to take big quantity, depending on the source, at least two tablespoons full with two glasses of water. and. It, it, uh, swells inside and makes a bulk in the intestine. So that has to be a really good quantity with good quantity of water. And number three, we must hydrate ourselves. 
You see eight glasses of water. That's approximately two liters per day, unless there is a contraindication because of some kidney problem or heart issue. Mm -hmm. Two liters per day fluids, liquids uh, should be good enough to hydrate a system. And uh, mm, as this was for constipation, but if the constipation does not improve, you feel very upset about it in spite of the natural remedies what we are discussing. Then you should see every physician, and, and especially if it is a new habit. So you have been all along have been having normal passing stools, but now suddenly over a period of time, a couple of months, this has become acute that you're not able to pass stools and all that. So then we have to exclude anything organic happening. So then you go to need, need see your physician and sort it out. Uh, the next common issue is with the urine incontinence. Getting up 10 times at night during daytime and dribbling of urine and all that, which can be very uncomfortable and embarrassing. In males, it can be prostate, in females, can be other issues like rafutras and a lot of other things. You know, with age, the bladder capacity gets reduced. In a normal person, I would say, also gets reduced. And uh, what we can do to improve it if there's no other organic uh, issue, no disease as such, then we've got to make a urine diary and, and see that and gradually extend the time of urination. So by 10 minutes, if you go every one hour, make it one hour, 10 minutes like this. And at night, avoid too much of fluids, anything which contains caffeine, like cola drinks, tea, coffee, chocolates, just avoid at least three, three hours, four hours, or even alcohol before you sleep. And uh, and avoid constipation because if you are constipated, this the it itself puts pressure on the bladder and irritates your, your bladder. So liquids and we have discussed. Then there are some exercises known as Kegel exercise. They can be looked up, and this is just like uh, if you want to hold your urine, just squeeze your buttocks, or like you don't want to pass urine, then just squeeze the pelvic muscle, and do it five minutes, three, four times a day. This will help you to retain more. Uh, urine inside. But if you have to go to urine, please don't hold it up. Go. And then after two, one or two minutes, you may still have the urine. Even then do it because there can be some retention in the urine in the bladder. The last thing is about this is the diaper, using of diapers. We are socially embarrassed in the family and otherwise. And we keep, you know, with the dribbling, we soil the clothes, we smell around the house. But this uh, should not be discouraged. One should accept it, that one can use a diaper when you're going out or if you can't manage in the house, you know, um, very easily, then use diaper, please. These are very simple things and which is very helpful and makes your life more better. Psychologically, you feel better. You don't feel left out and you can enjoy your activities outside the house also. And uh, the third thing is the falls. <laughs> We see a lot of people having injuries, unintentional injuries, fractures, head injuries as we grow older. Why? Because our reflexes become poor, our eyesight may not be as good, our walk may not be as stable as it should be, and because of medical reasons, or weakness in the legs, and uh, uh, some medications we might be on, some sleeping drugs, some tranquilizers, some blood pressure medicines, which can give rise to just more prone to uh, falling down. Now, other issues like improper footwear, using chappals, which are not proper, or the staircase which you are using is damaged, a part it is damaged. In the bathroom, most of injuries happen in the toilets. Now, there should be no obstruction between your bed and the toilet. It means there should be no carpet, no throwaway rugs in between that, and preferably they should be at the same level. In the bathroom, <coughs> we should have rod next to the toilet to get up and to take support. The stairs in our houses should be have should have railing on both sides of the of the stair. So these are small things which you know help to get over things. And why you get more fractures also is because of nutritional issues, not a good diet, vitamin D, D deficiency, and all that. So that has to be taken uh, care of. 
no head injuries no head injuries are very important because you fall down and you just take, you don't inform your family or caregiver and you just take it in a normal stride but after a few days or few weeks you start your behavior is noticed by the attendants or by the your spouse or anybody around that you are drowsy you are not active getting headaches and all so this is very common uh, in people who have falls in the toilet or even in the in, from the bed or anything striking your head against the bed during sleep especially in people who are on blood thinners as strain or any other blood thinner so in this this case is the the hemorrhage in the brain subdural we call it subdural just above the outer layer of the skull and the blood gets collected and start putting pressure on the brain so this has to be uh, the symptoms that we watch and if possible get a ct scan done don't delay too long and stop the blood thinners and then start access uh, on the advice of the uh, physician and check all the medications what you are taking so this should be the main three thing which you commonly encounter as physician uh, in 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 the uh, area thank you i think uh, uh, ramendra you covered uh, one of the most important thing that is constant Cannot hear you properly. Yeah. I have any questions on? You're not able to hear me. No, better now. Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Right. Uh, uh, people have any questions? They can uh, put it up in the question and answer box. Uh, even now, so in between, also we may be able to take it up. But otherwise, of course, we'll take it at the end. I now come to uh, Dr. Samia Tandon to address a important issue, and that is the feeling. Uh, I would say forgetfulness. I have kept a key. Now I don't remember. I don't remember somebody's name, and uh, then I start feeling, uh, "Oh my God, uh, is it the beginning of Alzheimer's or dementia? What am I going through?" So, uh, Dr. Samia, I think uh, you will be able to address this. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So, I'll be addressing few psychological issues, and I would like to emphasize that uh, as we take care of our physical health, taking care of psychological health is equally important because there is a balance that is required because the body functions as a whole. so when there is an optimal level of functioning between the body and the mind the systems in the body uh, work efficiently coming as sir said as sir pointed out a very important symptom a very common symptom of forgetfulness so to start with i would like to give certain examples that uh, a person might encounter in day to day activities like uh, forgetting keys after uh, keeping it somewhere forgetting uh, eye glasses uh, uh getting blank when recalling someone's name forgetting someone's phone number going to the kitchen but then forgetting uh that what was the reason to come to the kitchen what was the work that was required or going to the grocery and uh, not being able to remember the complete list of items that that is supposed to be bought so these are some of the examples that a person might encounter in day to day activities now these are symptoms that i just said uh, suggest forgetfulness like if it occurs in the initial relatively younger years age groups so person does not get uh, bothered by this but maybe after a period of 60 to 65 years uh, there are certain concerns as to what if it might be dementia so uh, to start with every forgetfulness is not dementia there are several reasons that that might uh, lead to the symptoms of forgetfulness that are very common and at times treatable so i would like to highlight on these uh, factors that could possibly lead to the symptoms of forgetfulness the first could be physical causes like uh, endocrine causes like hypothyroidism 
There could be other disturbances in the body like a reduction in sodium levels, that's called hyponatremia, that can cause transient fluctuations in memory attention. There could be evidence of certain infections in the body, which might lead to these symptoms. And often in the elderly age group, the, the, the individuals are on multiple medications. And among the medications as a side effect, there could be some forgetfulness. Very commonly are uh, symptoms of sleep disturbances uh, there. So uh, taking, for example, an Alprax or taking an antihistamine or for example, for urinary problems, taking the medications. So these medications might have uh, as a side effect uh, uh, that, that might interfere with, with proper attention and uh, uh, memory functions of the brain. Other than that, uh, there could be certain nutritional deficiencies that might be there in the body. Most commonly, the deficiencies that have been seen have been related to vitamin B12, folic acid, and thiamine. Other reasons for these symptoms of forgetfulness could be a reduction in hearing or reduction in vision. And so when these disturbances are settled, the, the symptoms improve. Additionally, other factors that might lead to the symptoms of forgetfulness could be long-term alcohol intake. So alcohol intake, as we all know, does not affect just the liver, but in the long term, it also affects the brain and results in disturbances in memory functions. A very important and at times often ignored uh, factor is uh, depression and anxiety disorder. At times, I, I think I would talk about it a while later, but at, at this age, it, it, it is often taken as a normal process of aging, which is not true. So this needs to be taken into consideration and needs to be uh, acknowledged and emphasized that ruling out depression and anxiety is a very important factor. So these are the causes and most of them could be reversible and the factors leading to forgetfulness. Now I come to the dementias, most commonly the Alzheimer's dementia. So when we talk about dementia, they are a decline in the mental abilities. So it could be uh, that there is a dysfunction in the brain processes which are related to memory, language, and logical thinking. Now, how to differentiate whether this is a, a normal process of forgetfulness or whether this is a dementia process? So there are certain differences that I would like to highlight here. In normal age-related uh, uh, the changes, the memory lapses are occasional, whereas for dementia, the memory lapses will be frequent. Dementia has a gradual onset and a progressive course. That means the disturbances are going to increase over a period of time. But if it is age related, the, the, the disturbances will not progress over a period of time. A very important function that is the basis as per the current classificatory systems in both ICD and DSM is the level of functioning. In age-related uh, changes, a person will be able to function independently. But if the process involves a progressive degeneration as in dementia, it becomes gradually difficult to perform the day-to-day -day tasks that the person was doing adequately before himself or herself. For example, paying bills or dressing uh, dressing by like not needing help for dressing up or maybe managing medications. Another, uh, another point would be uh, in instances where there is forgetfulness, while there is age-related uh, deficits, the person, uh, for example, will not get lost in a place where is, which is not familiar. The person will see the directions and, and get back to the place where he or she is going to go. But in, uh, at times when there is dementia, the person tends to get lost even in familiar situations and is unable to follow directions. In age-related phenomena, there might be certain uh, difficulties to recall certain names, but there will be no deficits in conversation. So there will be no trouble in a two-way conversation. Whereas in dementia, words are frequently forgotten 
there could be repetition of phrases and there is a break in the conversation in age related phenomena the judgment is absolutely fine as it was before but with the process of dementia there are disturbances in making choices and in uh, making judgments so these are the major differentiating factors and hence it is very important that not every forgetfulness is dementia there are several reversible causes and one must uh, visit a mental health professional for further evaluation so when uh, we have uh, patients in this age group for evaluation a very detailed history is taken the informants are the patient himself or herself and also the uh, family members the onset of symptoms the course the progression is noted and there are certain neuropsychological testing that that uh, is very informative and that uh, and that is very it gives light on a various um, the executive function test that we name it so that are very nicely that can be sorted out and other than that mri also uh, uh, is helpful so it is very important that we uh, take care of all these things and visit a professional if we are concerned Thank, thank you, thank you, Dr. Samia. Uh, first of all, for reassuring that the majority of the people, uh, when they are you're forgetting things, are not are nearly normal. It's only when things persist, and as you have already outlined, certain of the indications is when you need to go and see a, uh, especially a mental health professional. It can be a good idea. There should be no taboo to consult. Uh, as and when needed, and it is was very nice that you also pointed out the problems which could be related to hearing and vision. And I think Raminda, you can maybe uh, cover a little bit of hearing and vision thing. And also there is a question uh, by one of the participants as to uh, in constipation, uh, which kind of medicine at all you have to this thing? Do you prefer herbal or? non herbal what can what are the good medications for constipation so uh, if you can cover this please and then i again ask you another question well regarding hearing i think it's very important because uh, the hearing is not proper and it itself can uh, lead to dementia if i think of some maybe that you are out of you know you're not part of the group you're not listening to anybody around you just nod and then you suddenly you gradually start uh, being out of uh, the conversation and uh, don't want to join anybody so hearing is uh, loss is partly age related and if it is not age related then we have to see ant specialist and get it corrected but use of a hearing aid is very important it does take time to get used to it i have no relatives who have spent lakhs of rupees and then given up and finally they now realize that yes they have to give a fair trial so use of hearing aid is very important and uh, be patient with it and it you uh, gradually it will get better second is the vision <coughs> a lot of falls are happening because of <coughs> the vision being not as good as it should be especially people who are using bifocal lenses it is advisable that they should use <coughs> sorry separate separate glasses for reading and for distant vision that that will help also and they should be periodically at least once a year a full eye check up should be done to see whether the cataract has happened or the vision has gone up or down so both these things are very important to keep you circulating in the family in the in the socially otherwise and to keep your mind physically and mentally very alert and regarding now the next question was on the uh, on, on You are muted. You you muted yourself, Manindar. Okay, okay. must have been missed. Sorry. So the other thing is, is like the tail. Uh, ideal is to get used to the natural ones, like a sip bowl, as I discussed earlier. Two big spoons or three big spoons with two glasses of water, and uh, uh, you can even take it before meal, one hour before meal, two hours before meals also, depending on how how do you move your bowels. Then. A high fiber diet, which again we have discussed earlier, with the chia seeds and uh, sunflower seeds and high 
protein for vegetables and fruits and other things now herbal i don't have much knowledge uh, as to which herbal legacy should be good neither i want to name them here but other uh, allopathic can be electrolytes dependent anti uh, laxative they act by absorbing more water into the intestine and making the stool bulky so it which is very common lactulose is very common which can be used but getting used to a proper laxative is not good because that you are whipping a tired horse today you having one tablet then you go to two get to three tablets then you get a stronger one so i would not really advise anything more disastrous and if it as i said earlier if it still persists then you must talk to physician and see that there is nothing organic happening thank you uh, raminder and uh, again i think let's highlight that today definitely you know again we are living in a great age where the problems of eyes and uh, i mean vision problem and the hearing problems can be solved i think very very amicably very nicely as compared to uh, these kind of problems in the past so uh, i'll again uh, raminder can you tell, tell us some more tips as to how do people at this age group can remain healthy uh, can prevent problems of of things to i mean again as i said there are uh, pockets in the world where people are living uh, up to 100 years and beyond and they are living uh, you know they always feel that age is just a number and 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 enjoying a good life so what will be your tips for people to remain healthy see basically one simple word even at this age also lifestyle issues <laughs> carry a lot of weight uh, the life issue we come into diet exercise uh, medical checkups vaccinations and all now first and preventing any injuries we have discussed already earlier prevent any falls and anything and keeping you know we discuss for the hearing eyesight keep yourself absolutely as much healthy as you can with the small aids of hearing aid or good spectacle and uh, this taking prevention against falling and all that but diet will come to eating less is better than eating more but yes eating less than means you starve you eat a very nutritious diet again high fiber diet to avoid constipation to avoid urinary problems if you are vegetarian lot of fruits vegetable high protein diet milk uh, yogurt whatever suits you but for non vegetarian it's lesser problem because the diet is already high protein with eggs and non non vegetarian material so diet is one very important issue lot of people lose appetite as they grow older that's because our metabolism gets low the intestines work little much lesser than a normal person would be our activities become low we don't exercise we don't walk around much as we grow older so for those people also they should have small frequent meals divide your meals into five to six times and uh, that should keep them going well now exercise is most important to keep the muscles uh, going and the joints strong it can be any exercise depending on your health issues uh, like simple walking aerobic exercise if you are playing game you are swimming nothing like it and then yoga a properly <coughs> trained exercises of yoga which take care of the whole body yoga meditation pranayam they are very important for mental health also <coughs> then we then lot of muscle mass is lost as we grow older so lifting of small weights start in 1 kg and then going up to 2 3 5 gradually to help build the muscle mass also and the protein diet i said uh, to help the building of the muscle and third is the annual or periodic as advice medical check up lot of small issues can be sorted out by a routine check up if you are reasonably healthy you may do it once a year but if you physician see things if your diabetes or any issue maybe once in 3 months depending on your health status so we should not ignore no no i'm feeling all right this is part of my age age is not a number you know 
age is not a curse. It's like growing up, like a child growing up. You learn new things and you take care of yourself. So we should not treat age, old age as a curse. Take it positively. Develop new hobbies. You might learn, might learn music, painting, or anything. If you like traveling, do that, which you don't have time earlier. And lastly, is the vaccinations, which are again very important, very much, very much uh, ignored by a lot of people. Either the family is not covered, you know, once a child vaccinations are done, then a lot of us people, we forget about the adult vaccination. The important one is the swine flu and the influenza vaccine, which should be done every October, September to November, because the incidence of influenza is higher during the next six months, October to March. So that should be done every year, a simple vaccine, freely available. Then we have two pneumonia vaccines. One is Pneumovax 23. There are 23 strains of pneumonia in it. It is once in five years. Another vaccine is Prevena 13, which has 13 different strains of pneumonia. This is only once in lifetime. For people above 60, 65, only once in lifetime. And the third one is Typhoid vaccine, which still old people can get typhoid also. It's given once in three years. And lastly, COVID vaccine. Some people are not keen on this vaccine, but we have seen this data from America and all that 80% of the hospital admission with COVID recently have been people who have not been vaccinated. And people who have been vaccinated, admissions have been much less, and the fatalities also have been <laughs> much less. So these are the small things to keep you uh, fit. Then issues of... Uh, diseases, chronic diseases, to how to tackle them and tackle them properly. They also make you, you know, fit and to avoid any complications later on. Should we discuss them, diseases, Dr. Ron? Uh, so you can also cover that. Okay. You can cover okay. That. Now, diabetes. Every fourth or fifth person in our country is a diabetic. And about 30% are undiagnosed. And those who are diagnosed, 50% don't take proper treatment. They are not well controlled. Another 20% have kidney issues. They get kidney disease because of their uncontrolled diabetes. So what I'm trying to reach at is a well-controlled diabetes is no more a disease. It's a lifestyle. Diabetes live normal life till 80, 85, 90. They, they live as long as they take care of your control their diabetes. A family has a lot of role in helping the diabetes. Senior diabetes, and especially grandparents, uh, sorry, grandchildren, sorry, grandchildren, they have more time than their parents to look after the grandparents. So they must periodically see what the medicine they are taking, compare with the prescription, doctor's prescription, and check on the slips, on the, on, on the strips, whether it's the same strength uh, or the different strength where the pharmacy has given. Every day we see these things happening, every day, even now. And especially, have to be very careful about the insulin dosage. See, they might have a little low vision, although automatic pens are there, but they may have low vision and they may not be doing a correct use and they go into a low sugar, hypoglycemia, very frequently. And the common cause of hypoglycemia is either overdosage of insulin or taking your medication twice. You thought you forgot, uh, you've not taken it and you forget, forget about it and you take it again. So these are, are you've not taken your meals at night and still our daytime and still you're having your insulin dose. So these are small but very important things which the care, any care, caregiver attendant are the grandchildren or the parents, whosoever is taking care of, taking responsibility of the grandparents should, should take. The type of a diabetic is very well known. It should be high fiber, good, low, carb, low carb, carbohydrate diet, will be nutritious. We can give them you know, nuts, like uh, walnuts, two or three walnuts, five, six almond, five, six uh, non-salted pista, which can be, you know, can be daily routine, unless there's a contraindication for some reason. Other. Their weight control must be there, which can be controlled with diet, with regular exercise. As discussed earlier, a diet exercise in a diabetic is very, very important. A lot of patients say, oh, they cannot, we cannot walk, we got joint pain, we got this and that. I said, okay, you 
go to doctor you walk for 10 15 minutes to reach his clinic you go to a shopping mall you walk for half an hour there you're all right so at least walk 10 to 15 minutes before every meal you don't have to go out of the house even in your living room and bedroom through your any long corridor in your parking space if you have a garden around fine otherwise you can go out and do that so just 15 minutes three times a day just before your meals it will do a lot of good every step counts every step taken by all of us not especially for diabetic it helps then they must have an eye check up every year as i said because their involvement of fundus can happen because of the diabetes and lastly self monitoring of the blood sugar in every 3 months check up of the average blood sugar that means hemoglobin a1c we have glucometers which are very cheap the strips are cheap people can patients can do them self again the care caregiver or the attendants or the family can do it periodically for them and maintain a diary see you may not have to go to your physician every now and then make a diary of and you can have a blood pressure instrument if you have high blood pressure take the blood pressure once a week or twice a week depending how much you eat make a record of them whatsapp or email to your uh, physician and do a teleconsultation so that avoids you going outside too much you know especially in covid days and uh, keep a little check on that so physician will have record of your medication so he can guide you on on uh, whatsapp or telephone consultation only as to how go about it but don't delay too long a lot of patient during covid times for 6 months or 8 months they didn't do anything they just kept on taking the medication without any and they were eating more no sedentary lifestyle and when they saw us now sugars went up three times 300 200 fasting and uh, all that is the we didn't have access so we need some patient education also by the physician that they are welcome to send the reports on the whatsapp or email and then they do a tele tele consultation second thing commonest is blood pressure same status here also <coughs> every third person has blood pressure more than 50% 60% don't know they have blood pressure 50% do take medicine they don't take it regularly so hardly 20% people with high blood pressure who take regular medication are well controlled and we know the complications of high blood pressure it can affect anything from your brain down to your to your lower end of the body especially your kidneys your heart that the primary targets the eyes they are the primary places where the blood pressure affects it's not that when you have, when you have headache only you have high blood pressure this is a common thing i didn't uh, see my blood pressure because i don't have any headache i don't have any symptoms you see people coming with very very high blood pressure with no symptoms just on a periodic or a routine check up for a medical examination for a medical certificate going for a job and all that and they are diagnosed especially people with family history of diabetes and hypertension they must look into it for them main thing is the diet which should be primarily low fat low low oil consumption and low salt we say not not more than 5 grams 1 teaspoon of salt per day and because salt too weight it uh, causes increase your blood pressure by constricting the blood vessels and retains fluid in the body which increases your weight and then subsequently increases the blood pressure so salt intake control your weight like exercise no smoking absolutely no smoking alcohol we can compromise to certain extent and you can take one or two two drinks me two small drinks that means 30 ml each drink if you are used to it we are not advising people who don't take alcohol we don't advise so we will say doctor ne bola ji aap le sakte ho bca mein aap le sakte ho no no if you don't feel like it don't take it if you're not been used to it don't take it yes but if you're used to it and you enjoy your one or two drink as you no contraindication like heart failure or liver problem or kidney issues then it's different thing but if a normal healthy old person if you enjoy doing it not more than 60 ml per, uh, per day so lifestyle includes diet exercise proper medication no smoking very moderation in the alcohol and weight the people who have heart problems they need a more meticulous care 
if congestive heart failure, a valve heart disease, or angina, or who had bypass surgery, they need to be very careful with their diet. The exercise, exercise has to be advised by the specialist. This is, we normally say symptom limited exercise. What makes you comfortable? If you are, don't try to overdo it, say, no, no, I, today I want to walk five, five kilometers and then drop that. No, you can't do that. So ask your physician or a cardiologist who's treating it, how much can you do it? And then gradually step it up as an advice for him. Yoga and aerobic exercise cannot be overemphasized. Yoga has a lot of, lot of studies have been done. I'm also Dr. Manjanda has done study. It brings down the pressure by 10% and also helps in the cardiac analysis. So yoga, proper yoga, meditation, and deep breathing exercises, which will help your pranayam, help your stress levels also. So lastly, the periodic medical checkups, as we said earlier, once a year, are as advised by your physician. It may be more frequent. And I just check up one second. Okay, Dr. Agar. I... Thank you, uh, Raminda. In fact, I think you have given some fantastic tips to all concerned. And I was listening to you. I can just tell you that as I was talking to you about the blue zones in the world, uh, they are the zones where I said people more than 90 years or 100 years are living. And the synopsis of the research in those areas also have come down to one thing that all of those people were definitely emphasizing on walking, were emphasizing on eating a little less than a little more and more of uh, actually more vegetables. And even in those Western and those countries, they are consuming good amount of vegetables along with the whatever non-vegetarian diet they have. And they do not believe in smoking, moderate drinking. So you have highlighted actually all the ingredients which can make majority of us reach 90 years, 100 years or beyond. And I think combined with this, just one thing more as to find your ikigai. That means find the purpose in your life. Start definitely looking at something that should become like an anchor. That's something you look forward to when you get up in in, in the morning as to what more can I do. So now I come to Dr. Soumya uh, for another very important problems in uh, this age group. And this problem is the problem of feeling loneliness because uh, as you can understand, the lifestyle is now such that the majority of the people uh, in, in our age, the children are all busy. Of course, uh, when we were young, uh, the similar thing was happening to our elders, but now we are the ones on the receiving end. And on top of that, now this uh, concept of, uh, even if six people in the family are sitting together, probably they're all sitting with their phones. So there is a great feeling of loneliness and I think leads on to depression and many of those feelings. How do you want to address that? Sorry. Um. So definitely this is a very important uh, uh, point that needs to be addressed because in addition to other factors like post-retirement, uh, children moving out or being busy, passing away of a family member, uh, they all, the, the feelings of loneliness especially have increased since uh, the COVID uh, period. So we have seen substantial increase in the, the reports of the patients feeling lonely, feeling alone and having low mood. So because social isolation, cutting from their, uh, uh, their friends, their family members, all has added up in the last uh, one and a half year. So uh, if, if we take, uh, if managed on time, uh, connected, being connected socially, this, this issue can be tackled. But if not, it might progress to either anxiety or a depressive disorder. At times, many people think that having anxiety or having low mood or feelings of loneliness are a normal part of the aging process, but it is not true. For that, one has to understand that what are the symptoms of anxiety and uh, depressive disorder. So I would like to highlight uh, the symptoms so that it, it gets easy for uh, the individual or the family members to uh, identify these symptoms. 
to start with anxiety anxiety is a normal reaction that is in response to any situation that we find stressful it is a normal human emotion and every one of us at some point or the other because of the difficult life circumstances especially since the covid other uh, issues related to self related to family related to occupation finances so at every at every step in life there is some stressor could lead to some amount of anxiety so there are normal ups and downs but what differentiates uh, an uh, a normal emotion from an anxiety disorder is if it becomes sustained over a long period of time and it starts to cause interference in the person's day to day functioning at that point it is it it qualifies for the diagnosis of a disorder few of the symptoms that i would like to emphasize about anxiety is that we can classify it into two broad categories one would be physical symptoms and the other would be psychological symptoms so if i talk about the physical symptoms so very commonly the symptoms that that are reported are palpitations or feeling of heart beating fast perceiving one one's own heartbeat or tremors a uh, patient with say kampan hoti hai haath pairon mein kampan hoti hai or uh, feelings of uh, the mouth getting dry or uh, uh, having headaches ya sir mein aise khicha khicha sa lagta hai jaise kisi ne baar rakh diya ho or uh, feeling of uh, chest pain at times uh this could be triggered by acidity but when chest pain becomes people worry and they go to the cardiologist at times to the emergency or at times it can uh, lead to disturbances in the bowel habits at times constipation could be there at other times diarrhea could be there so here also at the hospital setting we see a lot of reference a lot of patients who attend the medicine opds but after thorough and detailed evaluation it is mostly due to the reasons that is that is because of anxiety the, the it is a very simple explanation that the body and the mind are not separate the mind is the brain is all related to the body so there are nerve endings and whatever organ system gets activated that particular symptoms come into uh, the picture so this was about the physical symptoms the secondly is about the psychological symptoms psychological symptoms the majority of this is worry worry matlab chinta karna choti choti ki cheez ke bare mein chinta karna subah uthe ab kab kya karna hai दिन में क्या करना है बच्चों को भेजना है टिफिन बनाना है घर की साफ सफाई करानी है सो इट कुड बी रिलेटेड टू सेल्फ इट कुड बी रिलेटेड टू द फैमिली इट कुड बी रिलेटेड टू द वर्क कुड बी रिलेटेड टू अदर डे टू डे एक्टिविटीज दैट वी इनकाउंटर एट टाइम्स वेरी कॉमनली देर इज अ फियर दैट हैज मोस्टली वी हैव सीन सेट इन द कोविड पीरियड दैट फियर दैट समथिंग समथिंग माइट हैपन टू द फैमिली सब ठीक रहे किसी कुछ हो ना जाए so this is all a part of the anxiety process this it might lead to sleep disturbances and because of the sleep disturbances that might lead to irritability some amount of anger so this is uh, uh, as i have tried to describe how anxiety can present coming to the depressive disorders now this also is very important because more often than not it tends to go unrecognized and undiagnosed so for depression there is a clear cut differentiation from the individuals uh, usual self pehle uh, agar kisi ko acha lagta tha uh, logo se baat karna tv dekhna newspaper padhna uh, walk pe jana so there is there is a decrease interest in these activities which the patient or the person would like before the mood that i would like to emphasize there is a persistent low mood so Uh, a person will tend to feel low. Uh, the person will feel कि जिंदगी में खुशी महसूस नहीं होती जितना पहले हंसी खुशी का मन करता था अभी ऐसा लगता है कि बस एक जोर दे के चलाना पड़ता है अंदर से खुशी का महसूस नहीं होता सो दैट फीलिंग ऑफ लो मूड एंड दैट फीलिंग ऑफ नॉट बीन एबल टू इंजॉय फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम देर इज एसोसिएटेड सिम्टम ऑफ लथार्जी फटीक ज्यादा काम नहीं करते फिर भी दिन भर थका थका सा लगता है सो दीज दीज सिम्टम्स आर द कोर दैट वुड कैरेक्टराइज अ डिप्रेसिव डिसऑर्डर इन एडिशन देयर इज अ रिडक्शन इन सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस द पर्सन फील्स कि मैं तो कुछ कर नहीं सकता एंड दैट पर्सन कैन फील गिल्टी आल्सो कि मैंने जो पहले किया वो मैंने शायद गलत किया शायद उसी की वजह से मुझे ऐसा फील हो रहा है 
So there's loss of self-confidence, loss of self-esteem. Uh, there are disturbances, appetite and sleep. Either it can increase or it can decrease. And when the depressive disorders progress, there, is, there are negative thoughts that the person might feel that what is the point to live? Jeene ka kya fayda hai? Or the, or the person may actively think ki mujhe kuch mein kar lo. So at that point, uh, it is very important uh, like to not to let the depression progress in such a manner and early identification and early uh, intervention is important because the best thing is it is treatable. We have uh, very good, very safe medications and because of the polypharmacy that is there in this age group, there are very safe medications also because many a times that when people come to the OPD, they're very reluctant to start medications interaction so we address all these uh, uh, misconceptions and <clears throat> plus uh, counseling is very important so these are all treatable causes and one must not uh, feel stigmatized coming to a mental health care professional whether it is a psychiatrist or a psychologist because if we deal with this the quality of life definitely would improve so thank you thank you samya i think uh, you have really very nicely explained uh, this entire thing beautifully there was a comment from uh, mr datta kadam uh, regarding a couple of vaccines uh, one is for the shingles and i think definitely that's a very important vaccine for the elderly our unfortunately shingrix which is the current vaccine is not available in the country uh, there used to be a vaccine earlier zostavac which was uh, becoming available but zostavac has now been discontinued as of november 2020 it has been discontinued in fact from the us uh, uh, market and everything so Shingrix, uh, you require uh, two doses of Shingrix vaccine at an interval of two to six months. Whosoever can get hold of, definitely uh, it's a vaccine worth having. And uh, second, he talked about the Tdap vaccine, that uh, tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. Yes, definitely uh, that vaccine should continue every 10 years, uh, right from the earlier age group. So uh, as regarding that part is concerned, we are coming towards the end of our uh, session. And before, of course, I what I would like to do is to first of all, thank Dr. Swati Bhave for bringing me in to become a part of this pediatric induced geriatric program. And uh, so uh, also she is a brilliant uh, speaker and uh, thought provider in her own right. So I'll request Swati to uh, give her thoughts on this topic before we conclude. Swati, you are muted. Thank you, Dr. Vijay. This was a wonderful session moderated by you and two great panelists, Dr. Hajuria and Dr. Somya. And I'm sure the people will learn a lot from this. And thank you, Tanu and Anjali and Latika, who helped to organize this from the Aki Delhi Center. The aim of starting the grandparenting programs in Aki was that when we started this 14 years ago, we had taken two pillars of adult children and adolescents' life, that is parents and teachers. I myself have a tremendous influence in my life from both sets of grandparents. And in the COVID situation, I think many grandparents and the grandchildren connected much more because the grandchildren are more available now at home and not so busy in their classes in school. And since last year, we have started this grandparenting webinar. And uh, the health of grandparents is very important. So we have taken this as a theme. And Dr. Vijay Agarwal suggested the beautiful title of Aging Gracefully, which will be the theme of the Delhi Center. Now, what I would like to discuss a bit is my experience of the effect grandparents' illness has on the parents and children. Because I do a lot of therapeutic counseling as well as family guidance for parents and children. So I'd just like to share some of my experiences. When grandparents fall ill, there's a lot of effect on the parents for three reasons. One is you're used to seeing your dynamic, brilliant, strong parents aging before your eyes. 
and it's very difficult to see your parents which are helpless which does create a lot of negative emotions in you secondly when there's a death of one of your parents you also realize the thing of mortality or not being mortal and not being immortal and the death of a parent really affects the parents very badly and sometimes for grandchildren that is the first death they have experienced in their life and very often i have noticed that the parents get so involved into handling this death of their parents that somewhere down the down the line they forget that their children and their teens also need grief counseling for the grandparents and i've had lots of children who have gone into depression after losing a grandchild grandparent and then i realized that she never had a chance to ventilate she never had a chance to discuss how much she is missing her grandfather and these counseling sessions certainly brought them back secondly when a grandparent falls ill what is the reaction of the grandchildren now if they have been staying together and the grandchildren grow with the grandparents there's a tremendous attachment with the grandparent and the grandchildren and here as dr hajuria rightly said very often the grandchildren take a lot of care of their grandparents including going for walk with them holding their hand giving them confidence taking care of their medicines and also teaching them the new gadgets because it they feel very great that they have taught their grandparents something and the grandparents also when they become tech savvy can start connecting with their grandchildren this is especially true on remote control or distance grandparenting when your grandparents are in the us or other foreign countries and you are in india and especially in the covid times a lot of grandparents who were ill who were not well form a lot of joy by connecting digitally with their grandparents there's also a lot of financial issues involved because medical care is not easy in india and it's quite costly and if your insurance doesn't go up to that age a lot of financial burden also comes on the grandparents and the parents and if they are affluent then of course the grandparents are well looked after but if they are in a middle class family or a lower middle class family and finances are stretched very often it's a problem between satisfying the educational needs and other needs of the children versus the care of the grandparents and then often this may lead to an unintentional neglect in the care of the grandparents and this is a very sad situation and this also i have to do a lot of counseling to make the priorities right so thank you vijay these were the some of the issues which i have been dealing with my tele consultation and i just focus only on the health of the grandparents related to the children and the parents and many other aspects which we deal in other webinars i think it's a excellent uh, view point as well as uh, thoughts to ponder over definitely the family in the family grandparents are a very important pillar in any part of the family there is a problem then the whole family gets affected so with this um, uh, i don't see at least any specific question yes there is the uh, same thing about of course the even the hepatitis a vaccine and the b vaccines can be given on a case to case basis depending upon what has been their earlier immunization status so uh, with this at least i would like to conclude this um, seminar uh, workshop and i hope that and i can definitely say that uh, you know whatever there are a lot of things that you can read from the books but you know what came from dr hazuria was the essence of his treating people they now they were very the same from sonia that she has given extremely practical tips to people so thank you very much and i will once again wish all the grandparents to enjoy this beautiful years of life and as i said these are the golden years of your life be proud of it please enjoy it and find your ikigai thank you thank you so much thank you piyush can you please stop the live recording so that we can chat Piyush, are you shall you there i can't see i'm just talking to him thank you swati and uh, 
Yeah, I just tell him to stop the recording one more. Piyush, can you stop the live recording so that we can just chat?